Hi there, my name is Chris Collison and to, today we're going to look at the second part of an Excel video um, that uh, looks at how we might uh, generate a value for the Avogadro's number um, after passing a current uh, through an electrochemical reaction. We're actually going to take a copper strip and um, reduce that, sorry, oxidize that copper strip. So we're going to, uh, for every copper atom, uh, we're going to generate one copper 2 plus ion and that means there's two electrons per copper. Now in this particular experiment we're going to weigh out the starting uh, mass of the copper and then we're going to measure the the mass of the copper after we finish the experiment. So we can then understand how many moles of copper have been used up when we know how many moles of copper have been used up um, and we know that there are two moles of electrons for every one mole of copper, then once we compare that with our knowledge of how many electrons were passed through the circuit, remember the charge is equal to current times time. So once we understand that the, the charge, the total charge, and we know the fundamental charge per electron. So from that all, we can connect uh, the number of electrons, the charge, and the number of uh, atoms um, of copper that are actually converted into copper two plus ions. So this is gonna be much easier when we start to look at the Excel spreadsheet, and I'll talk you through it. This is the second part of the Excel spreadsheet. It's a second way of independently providing Avogadro's number. Okay, enough talking. Let's go look at the Excel spreadsheet. Thanks for listening. So we remember that this is the second part of our video where we are looking at the Excel spreadsheet associated with the experiment to calculate Avogadro's number. So we're already familiar with the work that's shown here on the left hand side of this spreadsheet. And um, in the spreadsheet that you'll receive, um, what you can do is we're going to jump over to the, the column on the right hand side and I'll talk you through how we're going to enter the values in here. We remember of course again that these cells that are orange um, are the cells where we actually input numbers. So let's start adding some numbers in here and what we're going to, to first do is recognize that in fact we do have this fundamental charge and I'm going to write it down again as the number of coulombs uh, per electron and that's a fundamental charge we can just look that up it's a, a fundamental constant and we're going to write it down again as 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 so there's our fundamental charge um, by the way we could have also have used these cells so I encourage you actually to use these cells for the calculations that we did in the last video you'll see these in the top right hand corner of the spreadsheet so plug in these numbers um, these are all fundamental constants actually the, the I lie the partial pressure of water you're going to look that up uh, and that is a function of temperature so as I mentioned in our example last last time the partial pressure of water here is 22.4 and that's in millimeters of mercury and the actual Avogadro's number that we know of course is 6.022 and that's times 10 to the 23 well into that and the actual Faraday constant is 9.65 times 10 to the 4 so what is the, the Faraday's constant we uh, recognize that the Faraday constant is the number of charge the number of coulombs rather it's the charge per mole of electrons so it's a way in which we we connect uh, the mole and uh, the fundamental charge of an electron um, and we can we basically multiply the fundamental charge by Avogadro's number in order to get the charge and this is in coulombs the charge uh, per mole of electrons so this is for example here going to be units of coulombs per mole I'll let you uh, figure out the other units in here you're going to enter these when you hand in your Excel spreadsheet associated with this experiment and you're going to do that electronically okay so we're also imagining in our experiment that we're going to weigh out the amount of copper that we started with so let's suppose that we ran this experiment and we measured out 1.7068 grams 
of uh, copper so we can of course put the grams in the in the column next to it uh, and then after the experiment is done so this is where it's important to to weigh your copper for each run that you do but let's suppose that we ended up uh, measuring 1.6665 that's the mass of copper that was used uh, or, or that's the mass of copper after the experiment was run and of course we can now measure the weight loss and that's simply going to be equal to um, the initial weight minus the final weight so that'll be F13. So what we now need to do is calculate the moles of copper so of course we know um, the mass of the copper that we was used up um, it's 0.04 Zero 0.03 grams. So what we need to do now is let's say equals um, this number. So this is our mass and we're going to divide that by the molar mass uh, for one mole of copper and that from the periodic table it's the atomic weight in grams of course and that's going to be 62.93 and go look that up yourself and confirm uh, but the, the answer now comes out here to be 0.00064 uh, moles of copper. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, for every atom of copper, that atom of, of copper is converted into a copper 2 plus ion. And that means it's going to give up two electrons. So we have two electrons uh, for every copper atom and therefore two moles of copper electrons for every mole of copper. So what we're now going to do is recognize that so in this next slide, we're going to say equals. We're going to multiply the number that you get uh, by, by 2. And that's the number of moles of copper electrons. Next up, uh, and this one's a little bit more tricky, uh, but this is now the number of electrons that we are going to calculate. And that comes from the current that's being passed through the system. So, so how many electrons, we've, we've actually calculated that earlier um, in the spreadsheet, but the number of electrons, we're gonna divide that by the number of moles of electrons of copper. So we're gonna have a number divided by a number of moles. And if we have a number divided by a number of moles, a number of uh, electrons that are in um, that that mole of electrons, if you will, then that is going to give us Avogadro's number. So think about that um, using a dimensions analysis, if you will. But let's think of the number of electrons here and let's think this through. So that number of electrons is simply going to be equal to um, the total number of electrons transferred. And we calculated that up here. So the total number of electrons transferred that came from um, B12 divided by the fundamental charge. So uh, let's go back a little bit further and say, well, what was B12? It was the total number of, of coulombs. Remember that Q is equal to IT. Okay, so the total charge here is equal to the current passed multiplied by the time that we passed it for. And we calculated this last time. Uh, the current we found to be 1.5 amps, and the time that we passed it for was 145 seconds. So from that, we've calculated our charge in here, and that ends up being 217.5 coulombs. So from that charge, if we know the fundamental charge per electron, and that ends up being 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we take the total number of coulombs divided by the charge uh, per electron, and that's gonna give us a total number of electrons in here. So this is the total number of electrons that we're passing through the system. And that's in cell B13. So that total number of electrons, let's swing back over. So we've got the total number of electrons here is in cell B13. So we're gonna write in here equals B13, and that's this number in here. It's the total number of electrons divided by the number of moles of electrons that were required to effectively lose us this weight, right? So we've already converted, we've already calculated the number of moles of copper in here, and now we've calculated the number of moles of electrons that come from that. So what we're going to do now is we've got B13, and we're going to divide that now by F17. So we're going to divide it by this number. This is a number of moles. So we divide that by F17. 
And that, my friends, should be Avogadro's number. So it's not exactly correct, right? 6.02 times 10 to the 23 is what we expect. Um, so how, again, another way in Excel, can we calculate a percent error? So I'm going to show you. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to write equals. And because this the number that you get might be lower than Avogadro's number, it might be higher than Avogadro's number. So what we're going to do is write in here equals ABS. And as you see in here, it returns the absolute value of a number. It's a number, in other words, without its sign. So ABS, and then we're going to put in F19 minus F5. F5 is the actual value of Avogadro's number. F19 is our estimate of Avogadro's number. And then we're going to divide that number again by F5. And then we're going to multiply the whole thing to get um, a percentage. Okay, so now this is our percentage in here. Uh, if we if we want to list that as, as a, a percentage, by the way, so what we can do here is actually look at the format of this cell. So and we can right click on here. So I'm right clicking. I'm going to format the cells. I can actually write this down as a percentage. Okay, so um, it comes out as as actually uh, wrong. If I calculate as a percentage, then Excel's kind of already doing the math for me, but that ends up being now. So if I, ju I just divide or remove that that 100 factor in here, and that's 0.76 actually written down as a percentage, uh, and that's what we're using Excel to do here to help us format that cell. So this is a 76% error. Um, the last thing we can do, again, is we can actually calculate uh, Faraday's constant. How do we do that? So we remember Faraday's constant is equal to the charge per electron, that charge per electron. Let's use the value we've calculated or actually input earlier in the Excel spreadsheet. So remember we added that in and that charge uh, per electron is up here. So that's uh, F3 and we're going to multiply that number now by the number uh, of electrons per mole of electrons. So this is our new Avogadro's number in here. We're going to multiply that number and we end up getting a value of 1.7 times 10 to the 5. Again, it's slightly different. If we do a comparison, our actual Faraday constant is up here is 9.65 times 10 to the 4. That's, a, that's about 1 times 10 to the 5. And down here, we've got 1.7 times 10 to the 5. So again, as you would expect, that's about, again, a 76% error. No surprise there. But that's it. Um, that's the last part where we're calculating Avogadro's number, and we're independently kind of independently uh, calculating a value for Faraday's constant, and that all really comes from the mass of the copper. So where are the errors in this particular experiment? Let's think about that for a second. First of all, there are errors in the mass of the copper. Uh, there are going to be errors in our ability to measure the current. Was it 1.5 uh, amps or was it 1.47 amps? Um, you know, how many seconds was it? Actually, measuring time is fairly uh, accurate. So probably the largest sources of error in this experiment might be the mass of that copper. Uh, probably more important than that is the actual current that we're using. How do we measure that current? And, um, you know, how accurate can we be in that measurement? Um, other measurements that we're making, the volume of the gas, uh, the temperature of the room, so I'd like you to think about all these things as you write your conclusion for the experiment and think about how you might improve the experiment if you had the opportunity to run it again. Okay, I hope you understand everything. I hope you can follow through what we've done. Uh, it's a great experiment and um, see you in lab. Thanks for listening.